there are publishers. So uh, we at I would deal with two types of publishers. There is the classic uh, news and media, which is the mainstream publishers. And then there is uh, niche publishers who focus on categories like lifestyle, parenting, sports, and so on and so forth, right? And these publishers, uh, you know, have, uh, have, a, have, uh, have a whole lot of evergreen content on their websites, right? Uh, they, they thrive on evergreen trends, right? Now, uh, from a Q4 preparation point of view, or from a, from a maximizing yields point of view, right? Uh, when you sort of walk into such conversations with, with, with publishers like these, right? What's what's your recommendation uh, as somebody who is selling into these accounts? Like, what do you guys uh, you know tell them, recommend them? Yeah. So, so uh, I think the first aspect uh, is it really depends what they do today, right? Mm -hmm. But you see certain gaps to be kind of common in most publishers. So one aspect to it is that how many formats are they trying? So one thing uh, that we at Archbishop has started trying is also the flying carpet or the parallax ads, right? That not only ensures uh, viewability, but also ensures more real estate in a uh, smaller format itself and allows the overall yield to go up. Uh, likewise, uh, we've also started focusing on uh, the video side of things as well with respect to the mm -hmm. output. So these aspects, uh, these aspects are a few common things to look into. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, uh, it's also to analyze what the current setup usually has. So header bidding today is uh, almost on 60-70% of the sites you'll find uh, header bidding. But uh, today header bidding is not just like a me too thing, uh, wherein, okay, we are also doing header bidding. There are so many bells and whistles inside it that if you're not uh, looking into it, uh, you're good with header bidding, but there's always scope to make it much better. As an example, uh, one quick optimization that we often look into, which balances performance, uh, and that is often that Abhinav and me speak about that performance is today not just the revenue, but also the page speed with core web idols and everything coming into the picture. Yeah. Yeah. So the amount optimization is something that we focus on that while the page is loading, how could you maybe delay uh, the ads from loading initially? In a manner, there is minimal impact on both web items. By the time the user settles in, the refresh timeouts as well as the uh, timeouts for refreshed ad auctions could be higher, right? While these might sound small, mm -hmm. options, but they not only help the revenue, but the overall holistic performance with respect to core web vitals, which then impacts your search ranking and gets you better quality traffic. Oh, that's true, right? Well, uh, you know, great answer actually. In fact, uh, this specific publisher uh, focuses on a lot of lifestyle content, right? Uh, and from what I can see on the website right now, they don't do a lot of video content. Video, ad, uh, they haven't been trying video as an ad format, right? But help me understand. Would you? <laughs> uh, a lot of people refrain from trying out new stuff in the last quarter, given the fact that it's so mission critical from a revenue standpoint. Right. Is that something that you would recommend uh, at this uh, uh, at this at this stage of the year, uh, uh, at this time of the year? Yeah. And I also understand that it's not that video advertising is like a new kid on the block. It has been there for a while. It's stable. It works. Uh, it, it's pretty much you know uh, the bread, butter, and jam for a lot of publishers out there right now. Right. So what? Like, how would you sort of you know uh, respond to publishers like these? Yeah. So. So, uh, I think on that front, it's pretty simple that uh, back in 2008, ad tech wasn't really there, right? So, there's no place for any one of us to refer to. While there could be standards around advertising budgets, but there's no playbook anyone like lean on to that, okay, when a recession comes, these are the things we got to do. So, yeah. one that uh, is simple yet very important is to continue in, in Q as well because what the traditional playbooks in the last 10 years have formed don't touch anything in Q4 uh, anyway things are going to improve but at the same time if you're not testing uh, this time around uh, you could be hit really really bad in Q1 and you could miss out on seeing, uh, every single penny in the best time of the year so again maybe uh, it's the gambler's mindset that okay this is it let's make the most out of it and ensure uh, that uh, I know it's like a doomsday conversation that Q1 and recession in 2023 is going to be hard. 
but what do you do to ensure not just max out the performance uh, in Q4, but also be prepared for 23? And also previously, uh, Abhinav, when you were speaking about uh, cookies going to go dead, but I often uh, mention this that they are already dead. It's just that we don't value that bit of the internet that much. That's yeah. on Mustafa and Safari. And uh, continuously, if we only focus on even India, Apple sales are going up every day, which basically means the Safari users. Why that is true. Far-fetched issue, but uh, we've already started to get the taste of it. It's like the deathbed on these platforms, which yeah. would allow us to prepare for Chrome. 